Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This video is going to be for those of you who own a WD MyCloud EX4100, and this may also be appropriate for some of the other models as well. But as you can see, I own the 4100, so that's what this video is going to be on. And specifically, it's for, for people who use the iSCSI feature to add a an iSCSI target to their desktop or a, maybe another device. For me, I use iSCSI to add a storage hard drive, virtual hard drive, of course, to my desktop PC where I store all of my backups. Occasionally, something happens where there's a power failure or a reboot. So something happens and all of a sudden the EX4100 is no longer registering that those iSCSI targets even exist. The first time this happened to me, kind of set off a little bit of a panic because I thought all of a sudden I just lost three terabytes worth of backup data. But when I logged into my EX4100, it showed me the free space and that told me that the iSCSI target must still be there. It's just not registering for some reason. So if you log into your EX4100 and you go over to storage, come down to iSCSI. If you're using it, of course, you'll know how to do this. And you go down to your target list, your iSCSI target list, and it says no iSCSI targets have been added to the MyCloud system. That was where I started to panic because I thought, oh my goodness, they're gone. I lost all that data. And I had no idea what was lost, but I knew there was stuff I didn't want to lose. But it is still there. At least in my case, it's still there. So this video is going to show you how to, hopefully, how to recover that and get that put back onto your list of iSCSI targets. Now, as a disclaimer, if you're not sure about your abilities to do this, do a little more research. Be very sure of what you're doing because the slightest little thing can screw things up and maybe possibly even delete things you don't want deleted. But if you're fairly confident in your abilities, this is what worked for me. Now, what you're gonna have to do if you haven't already done this is you're going to have to enable SSH. So you're going to go over to settings and then come down to network and you scroll down to your network services and you're going to have to make sure that SSH is turned on and you go into configure. You can set your password if you don't know the password already. And as the screen says here, the default SSH username is all in lowercase SSHD. So you're going to need to know that when you open up your terminal program to log in. Lowercase, in my case, it might be different in yours, SSHD. And then you're going to set your password here. And then, of course, remember that because you're going to need to know that when you log in through SSH. So once that is enabled and you have the username and password all set, you're going to need a terminal program. The terminal program that I use is PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y. Now another thing that you're going to need to know is your IP address for where your MyCloud is located on your network. And I'm assuming that if you're into the settings here, you probably already know the IP address. But if you scroll up from where you just enabled the SSH and configured the password and all of that, you scroll all the way to the top of the page, and that will give you your IP address for where this is located on your network. So you're going to need to know that when you go to log in on your terminal to perform the following steps. So once you have all of that information, you're going to need to open your terminal program, which like I said in my case is PuTTY, and you put in the IP address of your MyCloud and open the terminal and here's where you're going to log in. And like I said, the default username for the EX4100 is all lowercase SSHD. And you put in your password. And from here, if you're not experienced in using these commands and using this kind of an interface, you just want to be careful what you're doing because what you do can cause things to happen that you don't want to happen. So you have to make sure that you type the commands exactly as they're supposed to be typed and double check everything so that you don't have unintended consequences. Now from this point forward, I will also link down below a website tutorial that I found that would be helpful for you to follow along with as well. I'm not affiliated with this website. It's just a website that I found online that has instructions on how to do this. 
and can be helpful for you in copying and pasting commands so that you make sure you get exactly what you're supposed to get. And I'll link that website down below. But this is that website. And like I say, it gives you all the commands that you'll need. Kind of goes step by step, which is what I'll do in this video. But if you follow along better on a text tutorial, then you can use this website as well. So we've done these first couple of steps that it shows here. And now you want to see your list of iSCSI targets and make sure that yours is still present on your system and has not been deleted. So the command that you're going to want to enter into the command line here is this one down here, cd space forward slash mnt forward slash hd forward slash hd underscore a2 forward slash period system file forward slash iscsi underscore images. That's a mouthful. So again, I will link this tutorial down below and I'll also put these commands into the description down below as well. So you're going to want to go ahead and enter that command into the command line and hit enter. Now you're in that directory. And to see the list of your iSCSI images, you're going to type the letters LS for list, LS, and hit enter. And there you can see I have three iSCSI images, one for my laptop, one for my backups, and one that was, I think I was doing a video, I did a virtual image on how to upgrade a WD MyCloud personal. I had forgotten that one was there. I could probably delete that and regain a gigabyte or two, but that's not important. The one that I'm concerned with is my backups. That is missing from my desktop as a hard drive option, so I need to bring that back. Okay, so now that you have your list of iSCSI targets, you're going to want to follow the next step, which is to use the following command, du space dash sh space forward slash mnt forward slash hd forward slash hd underscore a2 forward slash period system file forward slash iSCSI underscore images forward slash and then the name of your image. You see there's a different name here, but that's just an example. And mine will be my image. So this is where you'll put your image name in. And in my case, that is my backups. And then hit enter. And there you can see that particular iSCSI image for me is 3.9 terabytes, 4 terabytes in size. And you're going to need to know that size because when you go to the next step, we're going to actually go into your MyCloud and recreate another image of that exact size and that exact name. You don't want to actually create a new one, but you're actually just restoring that name and that size to the list of iSCSI targets. So you need the exact name, in my case, mybackups.img, and it is 3.9 terabytes. So with that information, we're going to go back to the EX4100, and as you can see on the tutorial here, we're going to go to Storage, and then go back down to our iSCSI dashboard. We're going to create a new iSCSI target using the exact name and size of that iSCSI image file that we are wanting to restore. So we go back to storage, come down to iSCSI, and here we're going to create an iSCSI target. The alias is the name, and for mine the name is going to be exactly what it is on the one I'm restoring. My backups. And then you're going to put in the size that you want it to be. But so my image was 3.9 terabytes, I'm just going to tell it 4 terabytes. And hit next. And hit and for mine, I leave security at none and hit apply. 
And as you can see, my iSCSI target list has now repopulated, displaying that iSCSI target with one initiator connected, which is my desktop. And it's back online. So that is how to recover an iSCSI target that has disappeared from your list on your WD MyCloud EX4100. This may or may not work with the PR4100 or any other models. I'm not sure. So before you make any changes on your system, if it's not the EX4100, just do a little research. Make sure that this method will work for you as well. Yeah, if you found this video to be helpful and it has helped you to recover your iSCSI targets or it has given you some knowledge you didn't have, please give it a like and leave some comments down below. Let me know if this worked for you. And if you found it helpful, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you around the channel.